Steven. Get it done. Steven. Get it done. Look at me. Get it done. You're not gonna die. Let me save us. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 darkest superhero shows. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Vision, help him. For this list, we'll be looking at shows with twisted, unsettling, or serious subject matter. We won't be including animated shows as those deserve a list of their own. But Batman, the animated series, would definitely make the cut. Which superhero show do you find the darkest? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Doom Patrol The strange world of DC's Doom Patrol doesn't follow your typical superheroes. After the superhuman outcasts suffer horrific accidents that leave them physically and emotionally scarred, the only person to care for them is Dr. Niles Calder, aka The Chief. Each member of the eponymous team is tormented by their own personal demons and painful memories. Cliff and Cyborg are haunted by the deaths of loved ones, while Larry struggles to be open about his sexuality. But you have no idea how hard it was living this way. The lies, the fear, the threat of losing everything if anyone so much as questioned my sexuality. Some of the darkest moments involve Kay Chalice's childhood trauma and resulting dissociative identity disorder. Sweet, sweet baby Kay. There you are. Come. I haven't finished my puzzle yet. Finish it later. Jane acts the primary personality among the 64 superpowered alters that manifested to protect the young girl. Beyond the bizarre characters and wacky antics is a story about a group of rejects and their tragic pasts. I've been admiring your friends, Niles, those freaks of yours for quite some time. Don't you dare hurt them. Hurt them? No. That wouldn't be any fun. Number 9. Luke Cage after spending years in prison for a crime he didn't commit, Carl Lucas just wants to keep a low profile. You don't ever think about all the people you could help? You should be more ambitious. What if my ambition is to sweep hair? But the rampant crime and corruption in his home of Harlem, New York makes it hard for him to keep his head down. His indestructible skin and super strength come in handy when he goes up against the likes of arms dealer Cornell Cottonmouth Stokes and councilwoman Mariah Stokes Dillard. You want a job? I can find something more suitable for a man your size. Better pay you too. You ever carried a gun? Going by the name Luke Cage, the neighborhood hero tries to protect his community while dealing with systemic racism, injustice, and his own past. I was framed, beaten, and put in some tank like an exotic fish. Came out with abilities. Number eight, Legion. Noah Hawley's Legion remains one of the most daring, visually striking superhero series to grace our screens. When he was an infant, David Haller, son of Professor Charles Xavier, was infected with a parasite in his mind. He was diagnosed with schizophrenia, unaware that he was a powerful telepathic mutant. It's not real, it's my brain. That's the old narrative, son. The schizophrenic delusions. You're not schizophrenic. Your powers, the things you see, are real. Like David, viewers don't know when something's real or a hallucination. Listen to me, David. David. <laughs> Throughout his lifetime of mental turmoil and abandonment issues, David developed a substance use disorder, leading to a moment where he attempts to take his own life. Legion is a fun, trippy ride with layered, captivating characters, but it also explores love, mental illness, and the blurry line between heroes and villains. You know the most dangerous thing about schizophrenia? You're not. The most dangerous thing is believing you don't have it. Number 7. Moon Knight Stephen Grant is an Egyptology-obsessed museum gift shopist living a humble life in London. Often disoriented with perpetual dark circles under his tired eyes, he believes he has a sleep disorder. 
His life gets more and more chaotic until he is confronted by Mark Spector, another identity inside him, who also happens to be an avatar for Khonshu, Egyptian god of the moon. Rise and live again as my fist of vengeance, as my moon knight. Growing up, he spent years being severely mistreated by his mother, who blamed him for the accidental death of his little brother. The trauma caused Mark to disassociate and create the identity of Steven. Moon Knight has moments of humor and fantasy, but it also tells a complex story with elements of psychological horror. Give it back, you fool. Number 6 Jessica Jones Hardened private investigator Jessica Jones runs her own detective agency in Hell's Kitchen. The former superhero suffers from PTSD after years spent with the sinister Kilgrave, who uses his powers of mind control to get whatever and whomever he desires. I never know if someone is doing what they want or what I tell them to. Oh, poor you. You have no idea. While his backstory makes him a touch sympathetic at times, his constant gaslighting and unwillingness to admit his wrongdoing solidify him as one of the most deplorable Marvel villains. You violated every cell in my body and every thought in my goddamn head. It's not what I was trying it to do. It doesn't matter what you were trying to do. Jessica comes off as apathetic, but behind the sarcasm and hard drinking, she's a good person just trying to survive in a world that's beaten her down, helping a few people along the way. She may not want to be an Avenger, but her dedication to saving humanity is still heroic. Maybe it's enough that the world thinks I'm a hero. Maybe if I work long and hard, maybe I can fool myself. Number 5. Titans The gritty realism of Titans can at times feel forced, like the instantly memeable, cringy line from the first episode. This Dick Grayson isn't the optimist we know from the comics or animated series. He left Bruce and Gotham behind to be a detective in Detroit, but gets sucked back into the superhero world when a troubled girl needs his help. Rachel Roth, aka Raven, doesn't learn about her demonic parentage until she's a teenager and eventually has to face off with her father, Trigon. I know how to look after myself. Always have. You know what they say. Genetics is destiny. We witness several on-screen deaths, often at the hands of ruthless villains like Deathstroke. Violent, grounded, and all-around bleak, Titans delves into the harrowing emotional effects of life as a young superhero. You took another kid who was lost and angry and alone and convinced him that he'd be invincible if he put on a mask. No more Robins, Bruce. Number 4. Daredevil during the day, Matt Murdock is a lawyer fighting against the injustices in New York City's Hell's Kitchen. But at night, he becomes the vigilante superhero Daredevil. I'm not seeking penance for what I've done, Father. I'm asking forgiveness for what I'm about to do. Blinded as a kid, Matt developed heightened senses that allow him to become an expert fighter. When the legal system fails the people of Hell's Kitchen, Daredevil takes it upon himself to make things right. But after I lost my sight, after my abilities developed, I realized how many sirens there actually were. How much this city suffered every single night. And that means breaking some bones and spilling some blood along the way. But he's not the only one with a penchant for violence. Wilson Fisk, aka Kingpin, is a widely feared crime boss that no one would dare cross. You got a name? Wilson Fisk. Never heard of him. Because he doesn't want you to. That's what makes him dangerous, leaving the shadows, no one knowing who he is. A flashback to a young Fisk murdering his father gives us insight into the man he is now. Number 3. The Punisher After appearing as an antagonist in Netflix's Daredevil, Frank Castle moved on to his own show. The former Marine turned merciless vigilante lives a life of solitude. That skull? That's a memento mori. It's Latin for remember. You will die. As one of the darkest Marvel characters, Frank's approach to crime fighting stems from the unbearable loss of his family. His justifiable rage sends him on a quest for vengeance, but he later finds himself in the middle of a larger conspiracy to uncover. I'm gonna wait here on these assholes. When they come, I'll make them tell me where Sarah is. After that, I'm gonna kill them all. 
No cape, no superpowers, just a regular person in extreme circumstances using lethal methods. If you're gonna look at yourself, you should really look in the mirror, you gotta, yeah, you gotta admit who you are. But not just to yourself, you gotta, and to everybody else. Number two, The Boys. The Boys is known for its graphic violence and satire, but that humor clearly comes from a dark place. The series begins with the horrifying death of Huey Campbell's girlfriend, Robin, caused by an unhinged soup. My deepest condolences to Robin Ward's family. I was chasing these bank robbers. She just stepped in the middle of the street. All members of the Seven are pretty terrible in their own ways, except for their latest recruit, Starlight, who is assaulted by the Deep on her first day. Many of the characters have been dehumanized in some way, especially the Soups. They weren't born with powers, but made by Vought using Compound V. What are you talking about? We're born like this. I'm so sorry. Some are addicted to their strength and power, like the psychopathic Homelander, while others hate the consequences of their abilities. But to Vought, they're just lucrative weapons. A lot of American has entered into a partnership with the U.S. government in a global war against communism. Payback will embed themselves and fight alongside the Contra rebels. Think of it as a trial run. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Gotham explores the origin stories of the Dark Knight's most disturbing villains. Jonathan Crane is no more. Call me by my true name. The Scarecrow. Cloak and Dagger. Two teenagers connect through their powers of darkness and light. Stop running. Who are you? <laughs> the Umbrella Academy, a dysfunctional superhero family bonded by childhood trauma. We were just strangers living under the same roof, destined to be alone. Starved for attention. damaged by our upbringings. Hellstrom, demons, Satanists, and serial killers. You didn't finish the verse. John chapter 10, verse 10. It ends with ego veniat vitam habient et abudantius habient. Peacemaker, a hero with a violent upbringing killing in the name of peace. But you, you were just a blob of flesh I felt nothing for. Oh, Dad, maybe I'm a grower. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Watchmen While its source material was already dark, Damon Lindelof managed to go even darker in the HBO series. Set in Tulsa, Oklahoma in 2019, it sees a white supremacist group declare war on the Tulsa Police Department. We are the 7th Cavalry. We are no one. We are everyone. We are invisible. And we will never compromise. Years before, on the fateful White Night, the group killed police officers who protected minorities receiving reparations for racial injustice. Since then, officers wear masks to conceal their identities, including Detective Angela Abar, whose costume persona is Sister Knight. People who wear masks are driven by trauma. They're obsessed with justice because of some injustice they suffered, usually when they were kids. Ergo, the mask. The series opens on the 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre, a true American tragedy often left out of history classes. Unlike Alan Moore's graphic novel, the series isn't focused on morally reprehensible superheroes, but rather racism and extremism. And it is extremely difficult to be a white man in America right now. <laughs> so I'm thinking, I might try being a blue one. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.